Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Coming up today on FST News, the Falcons are taking on a local high school in a major game that you won't want to miss. Also, Kaylee Goodwin and Logan Winter join us again to share the highlights of a convention that had lots to offer. And finally, the Clark County School District is being reorganized. Find out what that means all today on FST News. Foothill, it's another beautiful day here in the home of the Falcons. It's Wednesday the 11th. I'm Amanda Leek. My co-anchor Lauren Muller is off on assignment. Shared decision making, that's what the Nevada legislators hope will happen with what has been called school reorganization. Legally, it's called Assembly Bill 394. The idea is that the fifth largest school district in the country, the Clark County School District, needs to have more input from the school site and community to make big decisions, mostly regarding the school's budget. The way it works now is that the school district sends money to the schools but tells them how to spend it. For every teacher on campus, for example, the school district allocates nearly $75,000 even though the teacher may only make about $50,000 a year. The $25,000 difference that remains can't be used at the school site and often goes back to the school district. That's all about to change. Officials in the district hope that the, decision, the shared decision making will allow more people to have a say. CS CCSD's Director of Educational and Operational Excellence Unit, Kelly Ballard, explains the goal of the reorganization. Uh, trying to devise a way to reorganize the Clark County School District um, in a way that would uh, better align the decision making uh, that has to do with how schools operate with the communities that are uh, most closely affected uh, with those decisions. While the school district is split into new precincts or areas of management, some students were scared about zoning changes. While zoning changes happen over time, according to Ballard, there are no plans to redraw zones as a result of reorganization. The school high school team includes licensed educators Tanya Abel, Matt Mayhead, support staff secretary Denise Anderson, parents Bridget McComb, Tammy Swafford, and Sean Thewison. Also on the team as non-voting members are Principal Lisa Burkhead and student Cole Trickle-Mealy. The meeting is today at 2.01 p.m. in the library. The meeting is open to the public. You can see the agenda online at foothillhenderson.com. It's the Cougars against the Falcons. Our boys and girls basketball teams are facing off against Coronado High School on our courts at the Pack the Gym game. Students can get a discount on their ticket price if they come to the game with their IDs. Boys freshmen play at 5 p.m., JV plays at 3.30, and varsity plays at 6.30. For the girls, freshmen play at 6.30, JV plays at 3.30, and varsity plays at 5. Let's get out there, show our Falcon spirit, and pack that gym. Also, the boys varsity team has a game on Friday here at Foothill against Trinity High School. But the basketball news doesn't stop there. Foothill is taking on Liberty High School on February 1st, and our student body president, Lauren Longworth, has a message for them. Hey Liberty High School, I'm Lauren Longworth, Foothill Student Body President. We challenge you to a Miracle Minute February 1st to raise money for the Keep Memory Alive Lou Rovo Center for Brain Health. The winner will be announced that Wednesday night at the Liberty vs. Foothill Boys Basketball game. Keep Memory Alive in support of the Cleveland Clinic Lou Rovo Center for Brain Health. See you there, Patriots. Looks like it's going to be an intense game. A lot of people want to keep the earth clean and it's getting easier. An easy way is as easy as putting on a scarf. FST News' Kaylee and Logan join us to share more on their segment, Tech Watch. Hello and welcome to Tech Watch with your Neonode Tech News of the Week. I'm Logan Winter. And I'm Kaylee Goodwin. 
Last week, we told you about the CES convention here in Las Vegas that was happening last week and are back again to talk about some of the inventions seen there. One of those was scarves. Scarves are an important fashion accessory to many people and they also keep you warm in cold weather. But have you ever heard of a scarf that helps to fight pollution as well? The French startup says that scarf will filter out pollutants from the air. The scarf hides a mask that has filters and centers, sensors built in it. The scarf can also be connected to an app on your phone that alerts the owner that there's pollution in the air and how dangerous the pollution is along with when you need to change the air filter. The company is releasing the scarf this year and they will have multiple styles. The company hopes that the styles will help encourage people to wear and protect themselves from the many pollutants that surround us. Another invention that was shown on what servers tackle. Um, we've talked about VRs on TechWatch before, but not any that includes your feet into the action. Servo's VR footwear includes big black sandals that can simulate different surfaces or train when walking on them, like gravel, concrete, snow, or even puddles. They are simulated by different vibrations the sandals send against the soles of your feet when on. The sandals also record the movement of your feet so that when you walk in place on the VR, it can show you walking through a scene. In they come, they are expected to come out sometime this fall and are expected to cost $1,000 to $1,500. For now, that's all the tech news we have for you this week. Find out more top tech news on TechWatch. We all want to look our best, especially in a book that lasts forever. Senior photos are available to check in front of room 741. Check yours to make sure there are no spelling errors and that it's the right picture. While on the topic of yearbooks, the newest edition is available for purchase for $90. You can pay online at the Foothill website or you can see uh, the yearbook teacher Bill Tobler in room 741. There is a brief meeting tomorrow for anyone interested in participating in track and field for the year. The meeting is in room, seven, in two, room 254 at 120. Throwing it over to flag football, they have a game today against Coronado with JV playing at 3.30 and varsity kicks off at 4.30. The junior varsity wrestling team defeated Green Valley yesterday with a score of 54 to 21. The varsity, varsity did not have so much luck, losing with a score of 60 to 4. The only win came from student wide English with a major decision of 13 to 0. Next, they have a duel today over at Green Valley with JV at 6 and Varsity at 7. Then on Friday, the varsity team is competing in the Farmers Invitational in Bullhead City, Arizona. As for the JV team, they are competing in the Western JV Rumble at Western High School at 3. And finally, over to bowling, they have a match tomorrow against Liberty High School at South Point Hotel Casino and Spa at 3. Thanks for joining us today on FST News. I'm Amanda Leek. We'll see you tomorrow.